Howdy folks, Greyhawk 4x4 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer, and this was my first, I guess, official day of being on vacation, weekend doesn't really count, um, and just as I had planned, I did the home improvement stuff that I needed to do today, and it's actually 9 o'clock at night now, but I still felt like I needed to do a video for you guys, because it's been a couple of days. Um, I'm exhausted. Uh, I busted my ass today uh, uh, painting and, and doing some construction and moving furniture and all that, but I got it all done. So, the frustrating part is that I tried started I started to try and make this video like an hour ago, and the video is going to be about uh, Return to Dark Tower. It's a board game that there was a Kickstarter for. And there's, a, there's history behind this. So, and like I said, I was going to, I started this video like an hour ago, and my plan was to take the original commercial, 30 second commercial, for the original Dark Tower board game back in 1981. It was a 30 second commercial with Orson Welles uh, doing the narration and everything. And it showed the original board game from 81 in it. And it was a fantastic little snippet for you to see what the new edition is based on, back to the original game. Now, unfortunately, Microsoft, in their infinite wisdom, decided that with Windows 10, they would discontinue Windows Movie Maker. Windows Movie Maker was the program that I used and a lot of YouTubers used to do simple video editing for our YouTube videos. And it worked amazingly. It was a great piece of software. It, I mean, you couldn't do real extreme you know, video, video editing or you'd have to still buy a professional video editing you know, software for that. But for simple stuff, it was perfect. Well, in their infinite wisdom, they decided that with Windows 10, nah, they don't need it anymore. Now they have an app built into Windows 10 just called Photos. And Photos has this video maker in it that is tied into, uh, it's all cloud-based bullshit where it's difficult to even save it to your hard drive and, and everything because um, they don't want everything to be cloud-based. Well, the fucking thing doesn't work. Um, it, as you were, so I loaded up both the 30 second commercial for the original Dark Tower, and then there was about a two and a half minute Kickstarter video for the new Return to Dark Tower, which the Kickstarter is long over now, but, um, regardless, it was a good video to give you the idea of the game and the flavor and everything, and you can pre-purchase it now, the game itself, even though the Kickstarter is over, you can still pre-purchase it. So I thought, well, I'll put both of those in the video so they can see the old game, and then they can see the new game. And then I will give my commentary on everything, and we'd have a nice, great little video, right? Wrong. Thanks, Microsoft. You made another piece of shit. So, so what happens is, as you're, if you add videos to your storyboard, like you used to be able to do in movie, Windows Movie Maker, with no problem, now... They just lock up on you for no apparent reason. And I did some research and I went on, and it is a very common problem. It's happening to a lot of people, and their only answer is, oh, you've got to reset the app, or you've got to reinstall the app, and all this bullshit. And I've already ha been through that with my other rig with Windows 10, and it bricked the damn thing, okay? So I'm not dicking around with any of your built-in software app, app bullshit, Microsoft. I'm going to have to find a third-party software program. Even if i got to buy one, I don't give a shit. I'm going to buy one that will actually work. Kiss my ass, Microsoft. You suck. Okay. So, now that that rant's over with, let's talk about Dark Tower. I'd love to give you some video here for reference, but I can't. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. But I will do this. I will put the links in the description below 
for both of those videos, for the original 30 second spot, for the original game from 1981, and the Kickstarter video for the new. I'll do that. So, my history with Dark Tower. Back in 1981, when it first the first game came out, and I don't know how old I would have been at that point. I, I would have been like 14 years old, probably, some something like that. And uh, it came out, and my buddy that first got me into Dungeons and Dragons, he was... He was, it, for my gaming history, my game, the beginning of my gaming career, my buddy, and I'll leave his name out of it because I, I don't know if he wants to be mentioned or not, so I'll just say my buddy. He, uh, he was the trailblazer because he introduced me to all my gaming stuff. He introduced me to Pong, the original first console you could have in your house, a simple little, you know, table tennis thing on the console. Um, he introduced me to Dungeons, the original Dungeons and Dragons, and then we got into AD&D and all that. Um, great board games like um, uh, Panzer Leader and Squad Leader and Alpha Omega, and then and then Dark Dark Tower. Now, what Dark Tower was? It's a round board game, and I can't remember how many people you could play it with. But there was an electronic tower in the middle, this big obelisk, uh, black onyx-looking obelisk tower that sat in the middle of the board. It was a round board, and the object was, as I remember it was, each person had a hero that you were in control of, and you're trying to get to the tower to assault the tower to defeat whatever the, the big bad guy person was in the tower, etc., to win the game. And the cool part was that the tower in the middle was like a little computer, and as you moved, you then hit a button, and it would randomly generate either uh, a, like, any kind of an event. It could be that you found treasure, it could be that you encountered brigands or skeletons or something, and you had to fight, and you had to do combat to, to you know, to, to defeat them. And so you and you did this to basically fight your way, but you could also find treasure. You could, I mean, it was just, it was just a freaking great game. Because if, if you'd already been playing Dungeons and Dragons, this this brought kind of a visual aspect to. It wasn't Dungeons and Dragons, but it was very similar in idea. It was fantasy based, and you had brigands and dragons and skeletons and all these you know foes and and then of course you had the you know, the, the tower itself, which was like your dungeon, you know. And it, in my opinion, it's one of the best board games ever made. Um, we couldn't play it enough. Now, here's the problem. Even if you have an original from 81, the towers themselves have, uh, because it was old technology, they have, in, a, in addition to like the light bulbs and all that stuff that would run the tower you know, so you could light up and see the what what the event was and all that there were also little diodes and different components and things that they just don't make anymore so most people that have one it doesn't work even if you can find one on eBay now generally it doesn't work it'll say you know tower doesn't work and you're gonna have to try and repair it find the parts whatever you know so it's I would love to have one I it wasn't mine it was my buddy's I never got one for myself. I should have. But even if I did, the tower would probably, something would be broken on it at this point, and so forth. So, because normally I would just try to find an old one on eBay or something. I have other board board games that I've bought that are like Alpha Omega that I found. And of course, that's just a regular board game. So I bought it. It's complete and everything, and I can play it. and It's fantastic. But with Dark Tower, it's, it's not really a possibility for the most part. If you could find one that actually works, like a pristine one that's in good condition that, that works and everything, it'd probably cost you 500, 600 bucks or something like that. Um, so, there's a company called Restoration Games that takes old games like that and they re envision them and then reintroduce them and they do it through Kickstarter and they have a very good track record. So, they did this um, Kickstarter for Return to Dark Tower. And their Kickstarter made four million dollars for a board game. Four million bucks. So never, or needless to say, it was 
way above the whatever their goal was or whatever and there's all these stretch goals that unlocked and all this so um, it's not a cheap game I think the base game is 125 bucks but that includes I mean the tower on the new one is not the same as the old one it doesn't have the events that pop up on the tower itself you use an app on your phone that's linked to it via Bluetooth and that's what generates all that stuff the tower um, has runes and stuff like that that light up and that then removable parts and stuff that you as you continue through the game you uncover and then there's an aspect where um, on certain people's turns that they do certain things it allows them to put skulls into the top of the tower and the skulls collect and and the thing it rotates so you never know where the skulls are inside the tower and what happens at it, as people move through the game cer certain things can trigger an event and it might release skulls and they come fall down the, the to the bottom of the tower and out onto the board itself and they kind of scatter and wherever the skulls land it's bad that that means that's what that area that's affected by the skull whatever I don't know all the details because I haven't obviously haven't played it yet but apparently that's not a good thing so if you're happen to be in that square or that's part of the the game board and the skull someone releases skulls and they come out of the tower onto where you are that's a, that's not a good thing so there's that aspect you never know as it's rotating around on each person's turn you never know where those things are going to release etc my understanding is and it does, just because you see you like you can't even count like you can count as people are putting them in and you go okay so there's like been six put in or something like that that doesn't necessarily mean mean how many are going to come out. Um, it it apparently randomizes it. So um, it's it, the tower itself. There's a video about a separate video about them building the tower. It's pretty involved. There's all kinds of servo motors and all kinds of stuff in there. So um, which leads me to my next point that I think they have. They're putting if I I may this may be a misquote, but I'm pretty sure I read that there's either going to, it's either three years or five year warranty on the tower on for the new one so um, and I think that it even I read up on it and I it was a while back and I am pretty sure it said you know you just um, they will just ship you a new one and then you ship the bad one back or whatever so I think they want to stand by their product to make sure and they have like I said they they're a reputable company they have a good track record so um, that was one of my concerns. Was well, if this thing's that complicated, what if it breaks down? I've paid, you know, I paid 125 bucks for this game, you know, but apparently there's a good warranty that's going to go along with that. So, um, anyway, so the the three aspects of the new game are the app, the tower, and then the the game board, the tabletop part. And there's there's so there's three aspects that all work together. Um, so, my voice is getting tired, so I'm going to cut this short here. Um, the bottom line is that I wanted to make you guys aware of it. Um, the timing wasn't good when the Kickstarter was going. Um, I wasn't doing well at that point. I can't remember what was going on. but And I think I did tweet. If you follow me on Twitter, I did tweet out about the Kickstarter, but I didn't do any videos. I wasn't doing videos at that time. So I apologize for that, but you can still pre-purchase the thing. So um, I I had to get on board because it, it is you know the whole retrospective you know nostalgia thing for me. So um, it's not exactly the same as the first one, but it looks like they took the whole idea and then expanded upon it. So it it looks. In my opinion, it looks really good, or I wouldn't. I hardly ever do Kickstarters anymore at all, but this was one I had to get behind. So, check the videos down below. I apologize for not being able to edit everything in the way I wanted to. You can blame Microsoft. Lord knows enough people blame Microsoft for all kinds of bullshit that they put. I mean, you know, they've got us by the balls. They know they do. They don't have to do quality control. They don't have to put fixes out, um, apparently. So you get what you get, you know. Um, anyway, 
that's it, guys. Uh, I don't know what the next video is going to be about, but um, maybe tomorrow or the day after we'll do the next one, and we'll catch you on the flip side. See ya.